Hey, good afternoon everyone. I'm driving into work. Um, I have to do a video. I feel like God is wanting me to talk about a few things that he has put on my heart. And I apologize for video quality and all that. Um, I'm about four generations behind on a phone. So <laughs> I may be a millennium, but I am definitely, I don't act like one. I don't keep up with technology. And I'm over here using my corded headphones, my wired headphones. Um, <laughs> don't even have Bluetooth headphones. How about that? So I can't wait for the day whenever we don't have to deal with technology at all. And once we're in heaven, we won't have to worry about that stuff. Anyways, so the first thing I want to say is we are going through such a hard time as believers, not only facing persecution from um, non-believers, but also facing trials of the world. We have all these earthquakes happening in California. The fires are still going on. Um, you know, we really haven't heard much from the locust plague, uh, but of course we're, we're seeing the effects of that with famine. There is so much I can't even sum it all up um, for you guys. Of course, COVID, probably shouldn't use that word, but the virus is raging around the world, um, so to speak. So I'm not saying that it's not real, but I don't think that it is an actual pandemic. I think it's a plandemic. Um, the numbers are definitely being blown up out of proportion to make it seem like it is a um, pandemic. So people are suffering, believers are suffering from um, illness and from the virus and people are dying. Um, I don't want to make light of that situation, but um, of course we know there's an agenda behind it. So we have believers all over suffering. We have non-believers suffering. People are dying every single second without knowing who Jesus is, without actually truly understanding salvation. Um, people are being led into deception every single day. It is getting worse. Um, even believers that I talk to are deceived. Um, so we need to pray for our brothers and sisters to get through persecution and trials of the world and that Jesus would heal them and protect them. And in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that all evil would be bound up and that a shield of protection would be placed around the believers that are around the world in Jesus' name. So that was just one thing I had on my heart when I heard about these earthquakes in California. Um, you know, we always need to be reminded to pray because in this day and age, we're so busy, 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 and um, I am guilty of that too, not taking time to pray for one another, and that is our, our weapon is prayer. Um, our weapon is reading the Bible, our sword, our double-edged sword that Jesus gave us, and prayer is such an amazing thing to be able to talk to the creator of the universe. Um, when you start thinking about it, thinking about it in terms like that, it kind of blows your mind. So moving on to the next point, um, I want to talk a little bit about why Christianity is being so attacked. It's being attacked because it's the truth and Satan hates it. And him and his little minions, the little fallen angels, they will deceive as many people as possible with false religions, false doctrines, gospel, um, within uh, the church itself, it's causing division. It has been, but I feel like even more so now as we're getting close to Jesus coming back, he wants to deceive as many as possible and steal our joy, <clears throat> those who are in Christ. So. I'm a sexual assault nurse examiner and 
thankfully I have never had to appear in court and I've been doing this for over two years. So, um, but we are trained to go to court and we are trained to deal with vicious, ferocious lawyers. And I'll tell you what, you have a five-year-old that was sexually assaulted. You do an exam on and do the evidence kit, your, your nursing exam, everything. You do that on them and then you go to court a year or so later, maybe not even a year. And the jury is saying that, you know, like, well, I don't know. There's not as much evidence as, as we thought, even though the what the child told me and their parents is so horrific that you're like how could they not believe well the lawyers I'm sorry my screen is going like in and out here let me take this little lanyard thing off maybe that'll help the lawyers will attack the defense will attack the nurse because they are trying to take apart the case as much as possible because otherwise I mean you're talking about a five-year-old that was sexually assaulted and you know that's already playing on the jury's emotions of course because it's wrong because we have consciences God gave us that you know (laughs) we know like even a non-believer would look at that and say that's disgusting and and so the lawyer will pick apart the nurse's exam and say, well, you got the date wrong, okay. Um, (laughs) Or you got, uh, you spelled their name wrong, or this or that, or the page number isn't correct, or there's little things that they try to pick apart our exam and try to um, attack our credibility as a sexual assault nurse and make the jury wonder if we even did a good job. And that is what Satan does. He is trying to pick apart the Bible's credibility, trying to make people doubt, trying to make it seem like, oh, it's just a fairy tale. Oh, there's not enough evidence. Well, let me tell you, faith is not physically seeing something and saying, oh, it's there. Faith is not seeing it physically, but believing in it so we believe in God and we see him here on earth and we know he's moving but we are not physically seeing him that is faith so when the lawyer is picking us apart it just reminds me of how Satan attacks us and not only is he attacking us by throwing different religions into this world and trying to confuse us and lead us away from the truth he is attacking it within the church itself he is making it seem like there's something that we have to do to be perfect to please God that it comes from us but the root of this is our pride we fall for this deception because we are prideful sinful creatures and we will be until we receive our glorified bodies as believers if you believe in Jesus and his finished work on the cross One day, very, very soon, very soon, we will receive our glorified bodies and sin no more. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm ready for that. (laughs) We all are. But to the non-believer, also, if they have not believed upon Jesus, he is just going to make their confusion worse. He is the author of confusion. Jesus is the way the truth and the life and he is not going to cause any kind of confusion at all confusion comes from the devil that's it so when you have all these different religions what is their basis what is their foundation if you ask any of these people that follow a false religion or a false gospel how do you know if you're going to heaven how do you get into heaven They're going to say, well, I try to be a good person. You know, I, I believe that I have done this and this and this. And, you know, God wouldn't forsake me. 
I'm, I'm not like this other person. They start comparing themselves with someone else. You know, that is not the gospel of grace. Every single religion, including the false gospel, gospel of lordship, salvation, you have to follow the rules, you believe in Jesus, but, you know, that's all false gospels, all false religion, it's false hope, actually there's no hope at all, so I can't even call it like a false hope if there's no hope in it, Um, I wouldn't be very joyful if Jesus was like, yeah, you believe in me, but you have to do A, B, and C, Oh, please. Like, that's... (laughs) I'm getting on a soapbox here, but I would be just like, well, there's no hope for me. I'm such a sinner. (laughs) I'm being serious. Like, you know, I have had my fair share of stupid, idiotic, sinful mistakes. Um, I sin every single day, and I will until I get, like, my glorified body. And I am trying to... um, Because I love Jesus, I want to do good by Him, through Him, through the Holy Spirit. It's not even me doing it. Without the Holy Spirit, anything I do, giving money to a homeless person, is like filthy rags. Helping out a family in need is like filthy rags. Unless I'm doing it for Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, it means nothing. So, I am nothing. What I do is nothing if it's done apart from Jesus. Through Jesus, we are sons and daughters of our Lord Yahweh. We are loved. We are brought in adopted. We are heirs of a throne. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And all of our works are rewarded they will be rewarded in heaven but it's not even by our own doing because if we don't know Jesus and we don't believe that Jesus is the way the truth and the life and we don't understand that his that he finished the, the this transgression on the cross he finished it on the cross if we don't believe that then your good works good works mean nothing so Jesus is the answer, point blank. That's that's it. Um, so Satan will will has thrown all these religions in our face, and some people will say, "Yeah, but if you were to talk to them, they would say that their God is the one true God." You know, not necessarily because I have talked to um, many different people from many different religions, and they believe some of them believe that there are different ways to get to God, which is false, Oprah Winfrey, um, and many others. So don't believe those lies. I mean, Satan is the author of lies, the author of deception, the author of confusion. He is going to confuse you and deceive you and lie. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come to save. He came to save, and he's coming back as a lion and we're going to see that very soon because tribulation is right around the corner. And right after tribulation, he is physically coming back, setting foot on the earth like a lion. Thank God the believers in Christ will not be here during tribulation to go through God's wrath and God's judgment upon this world. So... <clears throat> I know it's kind of getting to be a longer video, um, but I had to get my point across that Jesus is the answer because you look at all these religions and they're all the same. You know, you have to do good works, um, this or that. There's a set of rules that you have to follow. That's religion. You know, it's, I don't even know if I can say like man-made because I'm pretty sure Satan is the author of all of those religions. Um, including a false gospel, gospel of um, works, works-based salvation. So the the only one that's true is is Jesus. It's the truth, and um, it's hard for us to believe because we've grown up with these fairy tales. I think Ty Green was the one that did a video over this. Um, I 
apologize if I'm incorrect. Someone can comment if I am incorrect. Um, but I believe it was him that did a video over how fairy tales have uh, warped our understanding of reality. And so we don't believe like, oh, you know, uh, Cinderella isn't real. Um, you know, these princesses aren't real. I don't know why I just said Cinderella. Anyway, it's probably, I think it's the last movie I watched from Disney. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're not real. Like, so we get this thing like, okay, Jesus, you know, may not be real. You know, it's kind of like I go to church on Sunday and, um, especially with the Catholics. And I'm so sorry for saying this because my mom came out of a Roman Catholic family and my uh, husband's family is Catholic. So that is just what I see the most. They go to church, you know, they, they pray, they do this or that. They have trinkets they play with. And, um, I know I'm hitting that kind of hard and I'm trying not to be insensitive, but, um, at the same time, they, they don't really, I don't know if they really believe what they're doing. You know, it's kind of like, this is just for here while we're on earth and then, uh, we'll, we'll do our good works and everything and we'll, we'll have a good place in heaven. Um, but do they really believe that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life? And that's not just Catholics. I'm saying that's every religion, every false gospel, um, you know, believing that they can be saved through their own works. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and forgive me, I'm paraphrasing, basically just says um, that the salvation is a gift of God. It's the gift of grace, and it's not by our own works that we may boast. So we can't boast in our ability to save ourselves. We are so prideful. That's what, you know, led to the fall of uh, man. You know, Adam and Eve were so prideful they thought they could be like God. So they ate the apple, you know. That is our, our huge sin, our huge downfall. We're so selfish and prideful and we want to boast, boast, boast in ourselves and this, I did that, I did this. I'm so guilty of this, guys. I'm so guilty. Especially with my job. You know, like, you have to go through extra training to do what I do and I become kind of prideful in it. But it was not by me at all. I will tell you it was by God that he led me to this profession, that he got me through my clinicals, that... Um, he got me to where I am today, not by me at all. He opened doors for me that no one else would have been able to open. Um, so I'm telling you, there wasn't even a position at this hospital uh, for me. But anyways, um, yeah, like we were all guilty of it. So, you know, we do need to examine ourselves and stay humble and and all of that but the point was that um you know we are we are prideful and and that is why we we believe oh we can be saved by our own works but it's not true it's not true at all because we are imperfect sinful creatures and we will be until we get our glorified bodies so I hope to see all you guys soon. Hopefully it's in the clouds. And God bless.